afternoon. I'm Commissioner Therese Brown, and on behalf of my counterparts, Nelson Peters and Rich Beck, I'd like to welcome you to the 2022 presentation of the Jerry Vandeveer Award. So to give you a little bit of background, in September of 2016, the Allen County Commissioners created this award. It was to be presented annually to an individual or individuals who reside in Allen County and who have lived a life of service to our community outside of their regular profession in the example and tradition of Linda and Jerry Vandeveer, of whom we'll hear more about in a moment. Nominees for the Vandeveer Impact Award are evaluated on four criteria. Vision and action, seeing a need in the community and taking steps to meet that need. Selfless, selflessness and sacrifice, devoting their time and energy and service to their community without seeking recognition or reward. Commitment and perseverance, working through difficulties and challenges to achieve their goal. And finally, impact, making a positive impact in their community through their work and serving as encouragement for others to do likewise. Before presenting this year's award, we'd like to share the illustrious list of past recipients. Dan and Judy Wire for their work to clean up and reuse the local rivers and their efforts to revitalize the Well Street Corridor. Bob Worley for his efforts to preserve Smith Airfield and help persons dealing with drug addiction. Alex Cornwell for being a strong voice and advocate for the Waynedale community. Marissa Rang for working to improve the quality of communication between emergency services and persons with severe communication disabilities. Josh and Jenny Harda for working extensively with Guns and Hoses, a charity which provides assistance to first responders and their families. And last year's award went to the Board of Directors of the Veterans National Memorial Shrine and Museum. At this time, I'd like to introduce Commissioner Nelson Peters, who will share a little bit more about the awards, name, awards namesake. Commissioner? Thank you. Absolutely delighted to, to be here today. Commissioner Brown said that you would learn more about the Vanderveers. Uh, I've known them for about 20 years, so I've got stories. Boy, do I have stories. When I first met Jerry and Linda, um, I, I honestly think it was probably the 2004 or 5 time frame. So it has been close to, to 20 years. And the reason that I met them on that particular day was because they were having a ceremony at what was then the police and fires, uh, uh, firefighters memorial on the corner of uh, Fairfield and was it Brackenridge? Baker. 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 Okay, I was close. One block yeah. off, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I went down there to see what, what all the hype was about. And it was just absolutely incredible to, to see the firefighters lined up to see the police in their dress blues lined up and just to see what was going on that day and how we were able to, as a community, honor those individuals. That wouldn't have been done had it not been for uh, Jerry and, and Linda. And there is, there is so much more to the story. They started out, in my mind, as legends and have done absolutely nothing but grow their legendary presence through the days. Jerry and uh, Linda went on to, to make more improvements to the Baker Fairfield neighborhood um, where they lived and worked and had been tireless advocates for, for police and, and firefighters. Uh, we stopped in about 2016 and we said, wow, here are some folks that are truly doing things in the Allen County community who absolutely have to be recognized. So as I recall, um, Commissioner Brown, at the time Commissioner Bloom and myself marched over to their house. And we had this little plaque and this, this little award that we wanted to present. I think it was summertime, might have been July or August of 2016 wanted to present to Jerry and, and Linda. And what it was, was the uh, Jerry and Linda Vandeveer Impact Award. And we wanted to do that, to recognize everything that they had, that they had done 
uh, in the Allen County community, in particular uh, for, for police and fire. But there was more, and I'll tell you about that in, in just a minute. Um, what we told them at the time was, because of their contributions, we thought it was appropriate to make this a legacy award. And so what we wanted to do is we wanted to utilize about this time of year, every year, to bring this award forward and honor somebody in the Allen County community who was serving in the stead that Linda and Jerry were back, uh, back in the day. So much has been done by these individuals and what they continued, uh, what Jerry and, and Gerald, his son now, continued to do is things like, uh, well, put together the police firefighters uh, memorial that you see over on Wells Street right now. What an absolutely gorgeous piece of property that is. And they continue to honor police and fire annually in, in May with a ceremony that I know isn't easy to put to, together. Uh, they, they'd gone further uh, in promoting efforts that bring attention to the issue of violence in the Allen County community and, and other places. And I know after Jerry lost Linda back in 2016, he took to heart a crusade to ensure that people knew they needed to get colonoscopies. So Jerry, out of his own pocket, adorned this community with police and fire uh, fighters and, and other individuals with uh, the advertisement that people really needed to consider that step in their medical health in order to maintain that health. The Vanderveers have, have always preferred to, to stay out of the spotlight, and they just wanted to focus on the cause or the project they were working on. But through this award, we want that legacy to continue. We want to continue to remember Linda and Jerry and now Gerald through our annual award of the Vanderveer Impact Award. So here today to give you just a little bit more information about today's recipient is Commissioner Rich Beck. Thank you, Commissioner. Oops, I can only walk here. All right. Um, <clears throat> I do have the honors of presenting today, today the this year's winner. Over the years, we've had some amazing recipients in the past. Uh, uh, and this year is no different. The man I will introduce is known to most of us in his capacity as Deputy Chief of the Southeast Quadrant of the Fort Wayne Police Department. However, this particular award recognizes community efforts outside of one's career. And so I'm glad to share with you your community service impact made by Mitch McKinney. In addition to listing some of his volunteer work, I'd like to read some quotations from community members who have observed firsthand Mitch's dedication to the community. Mitch served on the Fort Wayne Children's Choir Board of Directors from 2016 through June of this year. Jonathan Bissaro, Executive Artist Director for the Fort Wayne Children's Choir, shared this. Mitch McKinney is a true servant leader. He has continually poured into our community with acts of service and passion. Mitch's support of the arts organizations encompasses everything from the nitty gritty to the boardroom. The Fort Wayne Children's Choir is one such organization. After completing two terms on the board of directors, Mitch continues to serve the Children's Choir on, a, on the Diversity and Inclusion Committee, serving as the MC for the fundraising dinner and opening doors for kids as they head to rehearsals and concerts. We're fortunate to have Mitch McKinney supporting the work of the Fort Wayne Children's Choir and supporting all of the people of Fort Wayne in his generous spirit. Mitch has a passion to ensure that the performing arts thrive in Allen County. He also served on the board of the Fort Wayne Ballet from 2013, 2010 to 2013. Even through his no longer, even though he's no longer on the board, he continues to organize all the security coverage for the Fort Wayne Ballet performances and serve in other ways that promote the success of the organization. Mitch sat on the board of the Indiana State Lodge Fraternal Order of Police from 2016 to the beginning of this year. Current president of the Indiana State Lodge, William Owensby, Remembered how Mitch stepped in to assist a local family, an Indianapolis police officer who lost his daughter. <clears throat> in it, 
Mr. Owens be shared. He arranged for food to be brought to the family and helped in other thoughtful ways to serve them. It truly impressed me the depths he was willing to go for a family he didn't know. If I could summarize Mitch in one word, it would be service. He has a servant's heart. Mitch currently serves as president of the Fraternal Order of Police, Wayne Lodge 14, as he has since 2009. Rod Bratton, the alert of the Fort Wayne Police Department, shared this, that in his capacity as Wayne Lodge 14 president, Mitch was able to bring law enforcement and the community together with various community outreach programs. I have personally observed this work and can attest to the selflessness and dedication that Mitch has provided to this community. Additionally, Mitch has sat on the Fort Wayne Parks and Recreation Frankie Park Day Camp Committee since 2000. At this time, I'd like to turn this over to Jerry for his comments as we go forward. Here we go. Okay. Once again, I'd like to thank the commissioners for creating this award and let you know how humble we are for the naming of it in honor of my wife and myself. But even more important is what is happening because of it. We're meeting everyday people who work tirelessly to make things a little nicer for everyone. They're the superstars of our communities and they don't even know it. I'm so proud that this award exists because without it, we might never meet these people and learn of their unselfish endeavors. A little short of breath. <laughs> this is probably one of my best days in my life. And I know my Linda would also be so proud. Uh, today, we are able to participate in giving an award to such an outstanding police officer and human being who has given so much to our citizens, communities, and ourselves. Obviously, I don't have the hours it would take to list 22 years of love and dedication Mitch has shared with our city and its citizens. I'm sure most of you have no idea that he did all these things, but he never looked for fame or glory in doing them. I believe Mitch epitomizes what the award is about, never asking for thanks for what he does, yet he's always there if you need him. Over the years, I've cried, I've hugged, and I've prayed with Mitch. Now I'm honored to be able to cheer for a friend, brother, and a family member. Congratulations, Mitch. My friend, my son, Jerry. I'll go on the other side here. <laughs> I think one of the important things to know about all of this is the genesis of it. It didn't just start because some people in great neighborhoods with a bunch of money decided to throw this together. This was people in the worst part of town in drug infested areas that had problems, real problems. Uh, you know, go outside and in my alley I could find needles and spoons. That was my life. And the acts of these people, the police officers in our neighborhood, they came to our rescue. You know, we, we lived here. This, this was what we lived in. They came and they made changes. It wasn't just leave it and ignore it. It was the change. It was us working with them to try and get them to understand what was going on. They don't magically know we worked with them. And, and you know, and then when things got better, it, it was, wow, let's say thank you. What can we do? And this guy right here jumped across the street, found a plot of land and built something just to say thanks. And that's what started this. And from this, this is, these, these are how these things grow. You know, they don't just magically start at the end. These small things that nobody sees or nobody knows about, that's what leads to these great things, these, these wonderful things that, that turn entire areas around. That's what we need more of. And that's what, you know, this is all about. We want to say thank you. And, and give away for people who do this selfish, selflessly to get some sort of recognition. Yeah, there's people that get paid to do this all the time. Yeah, great. What about the people that actually get things done? Those are your grassroots people that go outside and make a difference themselves because that's what needs to happen. And from that, we end up meeting and knowing people like Mitch McKinney and all the other people that helped 
and that's where this kind of thing comes into. And then you see what Mitch does outside of that. Not only is he doing this as part of his job, outside of that, he does it. That's what he does. He goes out there, he finds the things that have need, and he helps. He puts in, and we all give back, and we all grow from it. So. With that being said, on behalf of the commissioners of Allen County, the Vanderveer family, and the citizens of Fort Wayne, I am honored to present you, Mitch McKinney, with the Linda and Jerry Vanderveer Impact Award. Can I give you one too? Sure enough. Sure enough. <laughs> He just does that, so I smell like his cologne. <laughs> well, I appreciate it, folks. It's one of those things where it is service before self. And um, I really, truly believe that this is what police officers are supposed to do. Um, as president of the Fraternal Order of Police, it's one of those things where, you know, the first two times I met Jerry, I have to let you know that Jerry, you know, let me know that he was armed both times. <laughs> I was in full uniform, and he lifted his coat, and I'm like, I'm okay, buddy. We're good. You know, he had a, he had a problem with a car. But then the next time I was working undercover in the alleys behind their home, and we had met before, but I could hear him in the back of the wood shack moving around, and so I'm telling my backup people, hey, you need to find that Jerry guy because my car's parked next to his property, and I think he's back there. And sure enough, he's back there. I, I call him Snub Nose Jerry, you know, because he's right there waiting. I thought the man was going to shoot me. I'm like, Jerry, it's Mitch, it's Mitch, right? <laughs> so we would sit on the front porch and laugh about that, and Jerry and Linda were both FOP associate members. And so the associate lodge is community members that come together to help us out. And there were times that we didn't agree. We just didn't agree because the lodge wasn't in a good business sense place. And that's what I've done for the lodge. And we've since started a foundation called Leaving a Living Legacy because we want to make sure community money is staying here in Allen County and we can augment other people who need our help. And if every officer takes one day and one time to put service before self, you can't make Allen County that much better, but we can keep making it better because as police officers, we're supposed to extend the helping hand to all who seek it, and I search that person out every day. So thank you to my family, to my wife, my son Miles is here. Thank you to my police family. Can't do it without them, and God bless you all. I appreciate the award. Thank you. And now I would like to introduce Sarah Rippey from the Law Enforcement no. Fire, nope, sorry, from Fire Police City <laughs> County Federal Credit Union. Hey, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so Fire Police City County Federal Credit Union was approached by an anonymous donor who felt the desire to show their appreciation to the recipient of the Linda and Jerry Vandeveer Impact Award for the work they did together and the work Jerry continues to do to enrich our community in her name. This anonymous donor has entrusted the credit union with a generous donation that will award each year's recipient of the Linda and Jerry Vandeveer Impact Award $250. In addition, this year we were approached by a second anonymous donor who has contributed in an extra additional $300. We are very honored to be part of this award and extend our appreciation to Mitch McKinney for his contribution to the community. Super that. Yeah, right. Well, I can't endorse this one, but I'm going to take this money right here and I'm going to turn that to Jerry and use it for the memorial. Oh, so, okay. Yes, sir. Well, we can't do it without them, and thank you to commissioners as well. You know, it's one of those things where we're better together, and we work together, city and county, to get things done. And again, if you, any of you three ever need anything from me, you know my number, I'll be here for you anytime. And with that, we conclude our event. Uh, we'll be here for however long for questions and pictures, so feel free to uh, come say hey to the recipient. <laughs> thank you, everyone.